every month, my private accountant community holds a no-code showcase, and it's every bit as nerdy as it sounds. A couple months back, Nick Merck showed us an absolute gem that was too good not to share. He's using a Chrome extension to post entries to a QuickBooks file while grabbing a screenshot of the page he's currently on. So for example, you buy something on Amazon, grab a screenshot of the confirmation page, bippity boppity boo, it's in your accounting file. We're gonna build it for QBO, but the process is the exact same for connecting it with Zero or Intact, FreshBooks, anything like that. So, let's build a thing. Roll that build a thing thing. So we're gonna be using Airtable and Zapier. I'm gonna create a Wii Airtable base with a free account called Transactions. If this is your first Airtable rodeo, I did two hours of CPE on Airtable for noobs. And if you sign up, use the affiliate link in the video description, you'll float my Airtable bill for a month. Next, we're gonna install the Airtable Web Clipper. So you go to the Chrome Web Store, we're gonna type in Airtable, and you'll see the Web Clipper here. I've already got it. You can see it up in the right-hand corner. And to get something to show up under that extension, you need to enable it, hello? You need to enable it on your specific Airtable base. So I'm gonna go to Apps, Add an App, Extension, Web Clipper. This is a good thing because if you have 100 Airtable bases, whenever you click that Chrome extension, you don't want it to list 100 bases. So you use this to kind of customize how it works with your base. Okay, we're gonna add it to the extension. And we've got kind of this placeholder now for that thing that we just added. But let's build out the base next. If you're gonna capture something from a website, what are the goodies that you need to post to the accounting system? The date, the amount, probably what bank account it came from, the vendor, and then we're also gonna attach a screenshot. So let's pull up an Amazon confirmation page as an example. Okay, so here we go. Amazon basic care infants concentrated drops, ibuprofen oral suspension, 50 milligrams per 1.25 milliliters, pain reliever and fever reducer, dye free one fluid ounce. So we've got our purchase confirmation page. What if with just the click of a button, we could grab all the goodies here. Just shoot that right into your accounting file. That's kind of sort of how it works. Okay, so let's build out our Airtable base a bit to add columns for all the details we want. Let's add date, vendor, amount, URL, because that might be handy if we have to go back to it, and screenshot. Last, I'm just going to create like an auto number unique ID for this. So auto number, that's just gonna make it number one, one, two, three, four, five. Wipe out the ones we've got in there by default. Now we're gonna map each of these fields to the extension itself. So we'll come back to apps and you can optionally pull in the fields that you want the user to put into the extension when they click it. First, let's give it a name, new transaction. Pointing at table one, that's this table up here. It's the only table that we have in the base. It's tried to kind of like auto populate these fields. We're just gonna wipe these out. So. I'm gonna remove these and let's start adding what we want the user to enter. So for date, you could have the user enter that manually. You could also automatically just grab the current day, but I'm gonna have the user enter it. Say done. What else do we want them to put in there? The vendor, the amount. If you wanna be fancy, you can actually have it grab whatever text is selected. So if you selected the amount, when you click the extension, it will grab that amount. I don't know that I want that. And then URL, that'll just grab whatever URL the page is on. And last, the screenshot, we'll leave that default to none. So let's pop back to that Amazon confirmation, click the extension, and we just made new transaction. Here we've got date, vendor, amount, URL, populated that automatically. And then screenshot, if we click plus, you can see one of the options is add page screenshot. And there you go. So what's the date of this purchase? March 26, 22. Vendor is Amazon, amount is $7.81. Add record. Okay, pop back over to Airtable, and there we go. Date of March 26th, Amazon 781, and the URL. Now, we've got that into Airtable. Only thing left is to set up a zap that triggers each time you have a new Airtable record. That zap then grabs all the details from that record, posts it to your QuickBooks file. If any of this gets hard, or you miss any of these steps, I'm gonna put links to the Airtable base and the zap we make in the video description below. So Zapier, create a zap. First step is Airtable. That's gonna be our trigger step. So anytime there's a new record in that base, we're gonna fire something over to our QuickBooks file. The base is transactions. Table one, default view, continue. Gonna grab a test record. There we go, there's our Amazon order. $7.81, that looks like the one. 
Okay, continue. Second step, gonna be quick box. We're just gonna create an expense, but this could do anything. Could create an invoice, a payment, sales receipt, go wild. Create an expense, connect to your QuickBooks account. All right, a few details here because the QuickBooks Zapier integration right now is a little bit fiddly. The labels aren't super helpful. So payee type, this is money going out. So we're gonna say vendor, super unclear here. It's asking for vendor. You can pick it from a drop down. So the only one in there now is Amazon, but what it's actually looking for is the vendor ID. You see this little number two here. So it's looking for the number of the vendor you wanna use. Now that means the vendor has to already be in there. So we actually have to add a third step to our zap. We're gonna insert it right in the middle here. And it's going to look to see if that vendor is already in there. And if not, it's gonna create a new one. So action events going to be find a vendor, optionally create one if none are found. Fun little tidbit alert, check out this trigger. Create vendor. You could totally set this up to like auto trigger some 1099 workflows, something like that. Eyes on the prize. Okay, find a vendor, connect to your QuickBooks account. All you're gonna do is search for a name. So the name I wanna search for is the vendor that was entered through the Airtable extension. In this case, it's Amazon. Now toggle this to yes, because if it doesn't find anything, we wanna check this box to create a new QuickBooks online vendor if it doesn't exist yet. So if it doesn't exist, it's gonna use the name from the Airtable step. And then the other required field is phone number. So I just dropped something in like that because who cares? Okay, we're gonna test that step. In this case, it found the Amazon that's already in there, no big deal. Now, why we need to do that is in the create expense step, we're gonna plug the vendor field into the vendor ID from the previous step. So let's go custom, grab the result of the second step and plug ID into there. So that will probably, properly, properly link that step with the vendor that was entered in Airtable. All right, payment type. I don't know why this matters. Bank account. It shows a whole bunch of things that aren't bank accounts. I use business checking in this case. Payment date. I'm gonna grab the field from Airtable where we entered that in. Only other things that are required is like the line item detail. So what account do you want it to go to? Office supplies, of course. For the description, maybe we chuck in there the page URL. Show all options, just search for URL. Here we go, URL. So that'll take me back to the Amazon confirmation page. We're gonna plug the amount from Airtable in here, 781. I think that's it. You could put way more stuff in here so you can actually put item detail for like invoicing. Only other thing I'm gonna put in here is under memo. I'm gonna put a link to that screenshot. Let's say screenshot URL, screenshot URL, there we go. Then when you pull the transaction up in QuickBooks, you can click on that bad boy, it'll take you to the original screenshot. QuickBooks' Zapier integration right now doesn't let you push actual file attachments in, but clicking on a URL, not the end of the world. All right, we'll test this, see if it works. Wowie, it did. Okay, let's open up QuickBooks, see what that looks like. Okay, expenses, here we go. Expense, Amazon, $7.81, links you to the confirmation page, and down here it'll link you to the Airtable screenshot. There you go. So just by pulling down this we drop down, we put three details in and it posted that to the accounting. Now, is that useful for you? Is that useful for your client? A lot of different ways you could use this. So a few odds and ends ways to beef this up and kind of get you noodling on what else you could do with this. Well, when we entered vendors, all that is is just vanilla text. But if you want it to be super fancy, we could use some relational database wizardry and Airtable. What were those words? Well. Let's add a second table called vendors. All this is gonna be is just a list of who our vendors are. Amazon, Tina, Steve. And then back on table one, instead of having just a plain text field for keying in the vendor, we're actually going to link it to the other table. So say link to another record, link to the vendors table. We're gonna turn off linking to multiple records because we just want one vendor, great field. Now we can link this to any of our vendors. So let's real quick modify our extension settings here. I'm gonna get rid of that first vendor one we had in there and add the new vendor one we just added called vendors, pull that up under date. Let's see what that looks like. Back to the Amazon page, click the extension, new transaction. And now when we get to vendors, you say select an option and it will limit you to a fixed set of options. So you've got the three things we added there. If you got a long list, you can search for the right one. This ensures we're not checking garbage vendors into the QuickBooks file. And you can get this Airtable vendor file to build out automatically anytime a new vendor is added in QuickBooks. So you don't have to manually add anything to this vendor page. What we're gonna do is use 
the triggers that Zapier gives us anytime there's a new vendor. So Zapier has a new vendor trigger. All we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a different Zap. It triggers anytime there's a new vendor in the QuickBooks file and adds that vendor's name to that Airtable base. That means no matter who adds a vendor to that QuickBooks file, when that vendor's added, it'll show up as a new option in the Airtable extension. Yeah, 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 pretty cool. Okay, how about multiple payment methods? Mm -hmm. So back in Airtable, kind of like how we created a vendors table, we would create a accounts table. This could be checking, one, two, three, four, credit card, who cares? Create a new linked field that goes out to that accounts table. So link to another record, accounts, just want to link to one, add that to our extension, accounts, done. Go back to Amazon, click this one again. And now you'll see you've got a select an option option under accounts. You can pick which account you used. Now back on the Zapier side, how do you get that to dynamically populate in this third step where it posts to QuickBooks? Right now, the only way you could do that is with a Zapier feature called paths paths by Zapier. And basically what paths by Zapier is, is branching logic. So you'll see it says conditionally run path A or path B. Here we can hit edit and set up the conditions on which it will go down path A. And if we have two accounts, path A is the selected account A, path B is the selected account B. So our conditional field is coming out of Airtable, you pick which account they selected. You say if that value is checking one, two, three, four or something, then underneath here, that's where you add your QuickBooks action. And if we toggle to path B, you put your logic in there. If it's credit card, whatever, then that subsequent action, that's where you create that QuickBooks expense with the correct account. So you can do that for any number of accounts and technically all from a single Chrome extension. Now, what if you wanted to do this with multiple clients? That's a little more sweaty. Right now you'd have to do it with a different Airtable base and different set of zaps for each one because each file is gonna have different vendors. Each file is gonna have different bank accounts. Not really a great way to pipe it all into a single one, but this could be a great value add for your client. I'm always shocked at the amount of manual things my client's doing that I don't realize. Something like this, you could set up for them with a free Airtable and Zapier account. It's gonna live in the corner of their browser and you're gonna make their life just that much easier. Last, if you use a document management service like Dexter, Corpe, HubDoc, you can push that screenshot you took optionally over to the document management service. So let's say you have a drop down that says, do I wanna send this straight to the QuickBooks file or do I wanna send this to Dext? Or do I wanna send this to Steve for approval? Using those same Zapier paths we just looked at, you build that logic into the Zap. So if it's something that goes straight to Dext, when it goes down that path, that next step's just gonna be email this screenshot as an attachment to Dext. Maybe another option is post an expense to QuickBooks. Another option is email to Steve for approval. All that can be set up within that Chrome extension itself. Pick an option, Zapier is gonna handle all kind of the follow on logic. Pretty neat. We went deep on this type of email automation in a video we did a couple weeks back. I'll link that above. There's a roundup of how to post entries to your QuickBooks file from a Chrome extension. Nerdalik works pretty much exactly the same way with zero fresh books and intact. Feel free to rip off the Airtable base and zaps via the links below the like button. And let me know in the comments what sort of builds you'd like to see in the future.